What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Everyday Organics. Today I wanted to talk to y'all about grow medias because there's a lot of them out there. Um, they each serve a purpose for different applications. Cost wise, there's benefits to each of them. Uh, so I wanted to run through a handful of them, give y'all some of the info that we dug into so that if you're trying to set up a system you can make an educated decision for yourself whether it be monetary aspect of it or use of it so let's jump into it a um, handful of them you know when when looking at grow media and, and why it's important in the aquaponics you have a whole lot of different aspects that you have to think about mainly your pH your pH level needs to be between six and a half and seven if it's not there you know it's not good for the plants it does a lot of negative things to the system it can kill your fish so understanding that your media has to be pH neutral if you will you need to understand what products are out there that you can use now I've talked about that we use the mixture of lava rock and expanded clay uh, I would say number one expanded clay is probably by far the best and for ease of use and how it works in the system but it's also the most expensive um, and probably for that exact reason is that you know if, if you've got water going into your deep water beds and you need to move a plant that expanded clay lets you reach all the way in there get underneath that root ball pull the plant straight up and it doesn't stop you from doing it now whereas lava rock once it starts growing into it it doesn't really move and so as far as ease on the system and switching plants out if that's what your intent is with the system and replace it with new plants to root expanded clay is probably your best choice now if you're planning on leaving plants in there let them flower germinate you know reseed and you're not worried about having to move plants then some of these other medias are going to work just fine for you so one of the things to keep in mind is you do not want your media too small. It will clog the system. It doesn't let the proper air flow through it. doesn't let the water drain the way it should. And it causes big air gaps if it's too big, if it's too small. So all those issues can creep up into your system and cause a lot of damage to it. And you're going to end up losing fish, losing plants, restarting. And so you got to keep that in mind. Now weight. At least for us, weight was a big concern because we built all of the tables. We knew that you know if we ever had to move them, we wanted it to be somewhat easy to maintain and be productive for what we we wanted out of the system. A span of clay obviously is super light. Lava rock is, is heavy, but it's porous. It's not terrible, um, but you have to wash the heck out of it in order for it not to clog that system. You've got gravel. You've got several other things, and I'll run through the list here shortly, but keep in mind that weight is an important factor in these systems. Uh, the depth, you know, I know we've got a mixture of deep and shallow beds. Our shallow beds are being used for different things, but realistically you want 11, 12 inches of media so that the roots have a place to go. They take hold, they help hold your plants upright. And so keep that in mind when you're filling, you know, a four by four deep bed takes about six to seven bags of expanded clay in the 50 liters it's expensive it's 30 something dollars a bag at least near us 
unless you have a wholesale account or are able to find it cheaper, it's expensive. So that's also part of the reason why we went with the lava rock and the expanded clay because I could get lava rock relatively cheap, use it for two thirds of it, finish the last third of it out with the expanded clay. Something else to keep in mind is easy on the hands. You know, if it's sharp like lava rock or, you know, it wears your hands out. So if you have to move plants, keep that in mind because if it's cutting your hands, the chances of it cutting the root system is even greater because it's a whole lot more delicate on the plant than it is your hands. So keep that in mind. The other big thing is no decomposition. Decomp you don't want it to start breaking down because your system is going to get clogged. You have issues again with your fish and it's just going to make you restart the whole system over again. So do your research on it. Don't go spend a bunch of money on stuff that isn't going to work. Make sure that you're able to do what you need it to. Avoid limestone at all costs. And I'll show you why in our swimming pond, if you will, of what limestone will do. Because in our pond, we have big limestone boulders that we created a waterfall and I knew that we weren't going to be using it for our system. It was for the kids to enjoy, to just watch. We haven't decided if we're going to add fish to it or if we're going to use it as a sit and lounge area in the shade, relax out of the Texas sun. So I'll show you that here in a minute, but keep that in mind. You don't want anything with the limestone in it because it's going to throw off your pH balance almost immediately. And that isn't what you want. You want that six and a half to seven on your pH level. Always rinse before you use any of the medias because look, it's dirty, it's dusty, it's gonna clog that system. And I will tell you, we had a truckload of lava dropped off, and the wife and I literally took milk crates, had to scoop it into the milk crates. We used a wheelbarrow full of water and we had to shake it and clean it over and over again and then carry each of those milk crates over to the tables dump them in there repeat the process it's a long process especially when you have a truckload dump because it breaks up in the trucks it breaks up in the buckets and so when they dump it it's full of dust full of debris same thing with the expanded clay or anything that you use. Make sure it's rinsed well before you mix it into the system because keep in mind, you got fish that you want to keep alive. So always rinse. One thing that works in hydroponics but doesn't work in aquaponics is cocoa core. It breaks down over time, which in turn causes your system to plug. Are you getting the hints here? You don't want your system to clog, so you've got to keep things clean. Doesn't break down. And so let's run through a list of what you should use. I'm going to sort of start towards the back because I've already mentioned the expanded clay by far tops everything else out there on the market, but you've got gravel. So Depending on where you're located at, check your gravel for any limestone. And there's some tests out there that you can you know, pour stuff on and find out if it bubbles, it's going to be limestone based or a high pH based. And that's not the gravel that you want to use. Now also with the gravel, keep in mind that you want something a half inch bigger or bigger so it doesn't go through your drains, doesn't go through your overflow, and it doesn't clog that system. So lava rock, like I said, we're using it in our system. It's rough on the hands, which means it's going to end up being rough on the plants if you have to move them. But 
for us, the cost effectiveness of it outweighed those risks. And like I said, we used it in about two thirds of our system. And then the rest of it is the expanded clay, but it's porous, it's somewhat lightweight and able to work well, you know, for our application of how we want to run our system. You've got grow stones. Um, it's a kiln fired aggregate. I don't see a whole lot of it around us, or at least in the, the places that we're able to purchase different products for grow media. So I don't know a whole lot about it, but that's another option for you. Um, expanded shell. If you can find it, it's great. Make sure you get the larger expanded shell. Uh, you know, we looked hard. We thought we had found it from a gravel distributor here in town. And it was this smaller shell, and it just didn't make sense because it was going to end up clogging everything making a mess and we end up rebuying everything but it is cheaper option if you can buy it in bulk now you can get it in bags your home depots your lows that kind of place typically carries bags of it but there again it came down to a cost factor for us we didn't want to buy 70 bags of it because we were not going to get the price break by buying it in bags and so it just didn't make sense financially for us to do and obviously the number one is your clay pebbles we use it we love it it makes it super easy to get in and move around so let me get up let me show y'all a little bit why we chose what we did now as you can see here you know I don't have water running in this right now but I can reach my hand all the way down in there I'm at the bottom. I can come up and it's easy to use. Now in our deep beds, we have about four inches and then I hit the, the lava. And so for that reason, it doesn't make it as easy to move plants, but I wanted to show y'all limestone so as you can see, we've got our waterfall, got our plants growing in there. We continue to add more and more plants, but if you can see the bottom, you see all the limestone sitting down there. And so all that gets into your system, it throws off the pH, and it just isn't good for aquaponics. So, as you can see, there are a lot of different choices out there for your system. It just depends on your financial situation, what you want to do with your beds. Are you leaving the plants in there? Are you removing them, transplanting them, and putting new ones in its place? Because that's important. If you're going to pull one, you got to place one. So for us, like I said, we use somewhat of a combo on a bunch of them because most of our plants will stay but we do have a couple beds that we plan on pulling and putting new over and over and over again so we use the combo of it so keep that in mind when y'all are designing your systems whether it's cost effective for you what you're doing with your system hope that helps hit me up with any comments or questions Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see y'all soon.